Let's get to the phone lines before we run out of time. Amy, been very patient in Wilmington, Delaware. Amy, line three, you're up. Um, I had a question about uh, what do you or Trump do about the ultimate anti-Trumper establishment candidate for Senate, uh, Larry Hogan, who may actually win? What's your question? Well, my my question is, um, obviously, Trump isn't going to back him, but do do they just ignore him or quietly yes. send him money or what? No, ignore him. Ignore him. If he wins, good. If he doesn't win, who cares? I mean, he'll vote with us uh, 35% of the time. Uh, he'll make up a Senate majority, so we get all the committee assignments. He'll vote against Rick Scott. Too bad. Uh, Rick's going to win anyway. So uh, he's going to vote with us 35% of the time. Uh, his opponent, who's a communist, is going to vote with us 0% of the time. So given the choice, I'll take the 35%. Would I do anything to help him? No. Uh, would I rather see him win than the communist? Sure. Why not? 35% beats nothing. Okay. All right. Thank you. Question. Amy, how's my station coming in, in there? AM 740 WJFP. It's funny. It's um like right at six o'clock. It comes in like really, really well, and then I don't know whether some local stations come online later. But right around eight thirty or so, um, I start getting static. I don't know why, but that that happens. So hmm. um, I just don't know why why that is. That you know maybe local interference, but. Who knows? Probably uh, playing games with it. But if it comes in a good at six, that, that means we're on a good path. Sometimes you just get different things happening. Thank you, Amy, from Delaware. Right. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Let's get to Reed in West Virginia, line two. Reed, you're live from the Mountaineer State. Uh, Mr. Fredericks, how you doing, sir? Super. Um, you know, I just have a, I just have a comment. I'm with, I'm here with Benjamin Lumsden on the, uh, on. You know, the hockey side of things. He, he wants Oilers and six. What do you think about that? Wait a minute. You're with Ben Lumpston, the player for the Mount, Mount, Mountaineers, our right fielder. That Ben Lumpston? Yes. And this is Reed Chumley, the third baseman for the Mountaineers. This, this is Reed Chumley? I didn't know you were Reed, this Chumley. Is Reed Chumley. Hey, guys, we are so fired up. We got Reed and Ben here on the, uh, the John Fredericks Media Network. We're live in Washington, D.C. Listen, uh, Reed and Ben, my two of my favorite players, you guys are the best. Rally Cap loves you guys. And uh, I'll get to hockey in a minute, but let me just offer you, can't believe I got Reed Chumley calling in, my man. Uh, I have your father. I talk to him all the time, Bruce Chumley, and your mom, Wendy. Yes, sir. Great people. I met uh, Ben's parents uh, just recently. They're on my text chain. But, guys, congratulations. Super regional. You guys are going on a charter plane. So you're not driving to Pittsburgh for an hour, then taking three flights from Southwest, then driving another hour like you normally do. So this is what winners do. They go on charter flights from Morgantown. But uh, you guys have had a phenomenal season. And I'm telling you, who is it the guy that said, who is it the guy that said all season, you guys are going to Omaha? I told you guys are going to Omaha. You, you, you're going to go there. You're going to win two out of three. You're going to Omaha. I said it from day one. Am I right? You said it from day one. All right, All right, so Mr. tell me Fredrick, we, we just wanted to get Wait a minute, call. don't go. Wait, wait. Tell me about okay. tell me about uh uh how you guys think you uh you stack up here with um North Car Carolina. Well, I'll give you my two cents and Ben can give him uh give what he thinks. So, uh, I think we stack up really well. Um I think we're going to go there and win and go to Omaha and win that also. And uh, I think if you don't have that mindset this late in the season, you're not going to win. Uh, Mr. That's Fredericks, right. last night, last night we all went over to Coach Maisie's house and had dinner, and uh, he, he talked to us all. And when it gets to this point in the year, it all comes down to what you got inside. It all comes down to the heart and grit that the team has, and how close the team has become. And I don't think there's another team in the country that has the heart that we have. And uh, we're going to go up there and we're winning two games. Well, I think you got to win the first two games. I think you win with Derek Clark, and then you come back and win with uh, Tyler Stratalski. That's peaked at the right time. But uh, the camaraderie you guys have, I mean, you can feel it. 
Uh, we were talking about that um, in um, uh, Tucson, just the camaraderie, even with the parents, it's been phen phenomenal with you guys and heart makes a difference. You know, it's interesting, I'll tell you this story. I told it to Coach Maisie uh, the other day. I'm leaving your game uh, or I'm leaving, I'm leaving, um, I'm leaving your game or no, I'm sorry, I was going to the bathroom. It's about the eighth inning you, you guys were up uh, 10 to three or something. I'm going to the bathroom and as I'm going there, I got my West Virginia gear on. I run into the head coach of Arizona who played major league ball uh, coached in the, uh, managed in the minor leagues. The guy knows what he's doing. I just run into him. I'm just going to the bathroom. He's leaving. And this is the coach of Arizona um, Wildcats, who's got all those signs up, all those, you know, championships they made, World Series. And he says to me, hey, congratulations on a great season. I'm like, well, thank you, coach. And then he says, I've never seen a culture like you guys have. This is the most uh, polite, most God-fearing team that I've ever seen. They're a pleasure to have here. They never say a foul word about anybody. And he says, the culture that you've built there, the camaraderie that you have, and he used the word heart, the heart you have, he says, that's what I want in Arizona. I want that. I got to get that here. And uh, I thought, man, when you get a compliment like that from another opposing coach who you just waxed out of the series, the top seed, that's pretty impressive. So, listen, uh, you guys have given us parents a great run. I've had so much fun, more fun in my life. I love going to the games. And, um, Ben, I love watching you uh, hit. I love watch. Hey, Ben, that, uh, that yeah. ball in right field that that big guy hit, every, it was, I think it was, a, it was, it was a, the first game. We, th we thought it was a three-run homer. And you were at the wall. And it was going to be a three-run homer, and you just looked up like it was going over, and then it just dropped in your mitt. What what happened? Just died out there? Yeah, when it when it got hit off the bat, I thought it was I thought it was over the wall for sure, but the wind just kept pushing it back to the field, pushing it in, and it died and and, and fell right before the wall. So it, it was it was a big big out. Fantastic, uh, just a fantastic series, and of course. Uh, Reed Chumbly, who's been our cleanup hitter all season, on fire uh, when he hits home runs. I call it a chum dinger, chum dinger. Kind of we we made that up. It stuck. Now everybody says it. Every time you're up, everybody says, "Let's get a chum dinger." So uh, listen, you guys have been <laughs> fabulous to follow. Whenever you would say that, I would hit a home run every time. Every time. Every you time. Say it, I hit a. <laughs> Sitting behind home plate, said, "Give me a chum dinger," and chum hits it out. But uh, what an exciting, what an exciting time in your guys' life! I just say this: uh, you're going to win this thing. You're going to Omaha. I'm going to see you there. But the bottom line is, enjoy every moment of this. You guys have earned it. You got a great team, and you can beat anybody on any given day. And I think you got a shot to win this whole thing, right? Why not yes, us? Sir. Why not now? Right? Why not us? Why not us? That's the motto right there. That's what we're going out with, Mr. Fredericks. Why not us? All right, so I'm going to give Ben uh, my hockey winner, okay? I love Edmonton in this series. I love Edmonton in this series. I love their speed. I love their special teams. Uh, I love them at home. Look, I don't, give, I don't take anything away from Florida Panthers. They got the experience. They're a veteran team, been here, done that. But I just think there's something special about this Oilers team. I mean, they've never made it here. They've, they've got that one veteran that had been there forever, Never really got to uh, a Stanley Cup final. I think they're hungry. They're very well coached. They're very well disciplined. But it's those special teams they have. Uh, they're tough on the power play. They outshot. Remember, they outshot Dallas in every game except one. They just outshot him. It was big. They kept out, out shooting Dallas. You know, they, they put a lot of shots on goal. They, I think they're going to put a lot of uh, pressure on Florida. So uh, I, like, I like Edmonton. That's, that's, that's my pick. We'll see how it goes. Do, do you have do you have any concern with the goaltending of Edmonton holding up in this final series? Yes, abs absolutely. I mean, the the, the 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 reason they won Dallas is Dallas didn't didn't get the shots on goal, and uh, you know they got a very shaky goalie situation, so that's got to step up. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go with their defense. Two I mean, zero five six. If you look at the if if you look at the number of shots on goal that, that Dallas had, 
uh, it was not enough to win a seven game s- series. So that's why I like Edmonton. But hey, Florida's tough, Ben. We'll we'll see what happens. Thanks, thanks, guys. What a great surprise! Reed Chumley and Ben Lubson Reed, the cleanup hitter, and uh, Ben plays right field, hits fifth or sixth. Both of them had a great season. So thank you for the call. Uh, thank you. Let's get to Vince in California. Vince, line four, you're live. John, I'll keep the Mountaineer hour going. Um, I'm a college baseball coach here in California, so this time of year is like Christmas for me. I got a chance to watch virtually every region this last weekend, and uh, I have to send you props. A couple weeks ago, you made the prediction that the West Virginia Mountaineers were your dark horse pick to make it to Omaha. And I'm telling you, when I watched all those regionals over the last four days this last weekend, there was no team more impressive than the Mountaineers. Their shortstop is absolutely legit. And their game one starter, who also came in in game three and closed it out, that's as good as any arm in the country. So I'm, I'm sold on the Mountaineers. Listen, uh, Vince, uh, it's an exciting team to watch. And they can, when they get hot, I just had a feeling they were going to get hot. And you look, at the, uh, you look at the Big 12 tournament, that was just a nightmare for us. But I was like, I was uh, in the hotel lobby after, and everybody's head was down. And I'm like, hey, this is a meaningless tournament. Like, who cares? It doesn't mean anything. So, you know, we're going to get picked. We're going to go to the tournament. I don't care where we go. We can beat anybody. You know, screw that thing. And uh, we're going to Omaha. So when this team gets hot, they're tough. Now, tell me, you say you're a college baseball coach, Vince Ware. I'm a junior college head baseball coach at Taft College, which is near Bakersfield. Been the head coach here for about 20 years. Wow, I tell you what, JUCOs um, have been the savior right now of so many players. Uh, our ace, um, our ace, uh, DC Clark, our ace Clark. You know, he he was at a JUCO. A lot of our key players started at JUCOs, right? They didn't they didn't get the uh, they didn't get the opportunity they wanted in D1. Started at JUCOs. They're very competitive, and um, so look, DC started there. A couple of our players started there. And JUCOs are now becoming a mainstay of how to move up in college baseball. So you're at the right place at the right time, Coach. Well, it, it, it keeps a young man's D1 dreams alive. And it also gets him into the draft earlier, too. So you go to a four-year school, obviously you're, you're locked in there for three years before you become draft eligible. And if you go to the JUCO route, you're, you're eligible on day one. So, hey, one other thing with the Mountaineers, and I think – what really prepared them for this postseason run is the meat grinder that is the Big 12 Conference. Um, there are no easy three-game series in the Big 12. The Big 12 is legit. I, I know the SEC gets all the props, and, and, and rightly so, but, boy, if you were to, to map it out, 1A and 1B, um, you have to put the Big 12 right there at the top of the list as far as the power conferences when it comes to baseball. Coach, uh, I want you to stay on the line and be sure you give D.C. Don't leave without giving D.C. Uh, your number so I can get you back on because I really want your perspective going forward. But uh, I think you nailed it. I mean, you, you look at the adversity. When you're in West Virginia, you got to play all over the country. You have no idea what we, we go through to get to games. I mean, they got to leave Morgantown. they got to take a bus for an hour to Pittsburgh. Then they got to go through security. That's another two hours. Then they fly southwest. You know, then they go through Dallas or they go through Charlotte. Then they take a second plane somewhere else. So they're on the plane. They're in the, you know, planes are late. They're delayed. You know, then they get to the airport. Then they got to get their bags. There's no charters. Then they got to get on a bus, go to their hotel. Then they go practice. This is all in one day. So, I mean, it, it, it's tough. And, of course, now with Arizona, Arizona State, uh, Utah, Provo, right? We got uh, BYU. I mean, the travel is intense. So maybe, you know, maybe after this we get a charter plane. But, you know, watching this team play, the adversity they've been through, the injuries we've had, you know, some of our key players been out. JJ's been out for half the season. Now he's back. Everybody's yelling at the right time. And I'm telling you, Coach, we're going to Omaha. I've been saying it from the beginning. Coach, in the infamous words of New York Mets, Tug McGraw, in 1972. Coach, you got to believe. You got to believe. You got to believe. Go Mountaineers. All right. Hey, stay on the line. Give DC your contact information. My DC, not DC. Not DC, the pitcher on West Virginia. My DC, no relation. 
Ben Stikes. Coach, see you soon.